Hello and welcome back once again to our YouTube channel Oracle VB Online Training. In this tutorial, I am going to present a new topic that is about how you can duplicate any act, any database from an active database. So this is going to be a step-by-step -step guide where you will be learning about how you can perform a data duplication from any active data jar. And this, for this tutorial purpose, we will be using two different servers. So one will be considered as your source setup and the other setup will be considered as a target server. So before I proceed with this tutorial, I'll, I would like to request all my viewers who have not subscribed so far to our YouTube channel, please do subscribe. You can take the benefit of our membership program where you can learn all these tutorials step by step. These are purely a guided sessions that you can always explore. Not only this one, you can also enjoy our previous tutorials from our channels as well as you can take the recorded courses so recorded courses available from our website you can check the link in the description for any training or any support work support purpose if you, you can always reach out to me on the given contact details or the email id so without wasting too much of time i'll, I'll just proceed with our today's agenda like how you can perform the database duplication from any and active data uh, databases for this purpose, I have already configured two virtual VM machines. So this is going to be my first VM machine with the name of uh, test VM1. And there is a target server that is a test VM2. So on this server, we already have the database with the name test database. So we'll first start this database. From this database, we are going to make a clone copy into the new server that is going to be my target database. So for in this purpose, purpose, we'll quickly log into the first node. I mean, this is a VM one. Let me make it bigger so that we can learn it quickly from here. Let me increase the font size. All right. So this is our. This is going to be our first setup. This is considered as a source in this case. So right now nothing is running. Let me quickly start the database. So in this environment, we have a test database. If I run env pipe grep, so I'll just quickly log in here. Start up this database. So on our target server, I already have the database running. Uh, sorry, the software has been installed so far. There is no database. So we need to just remember that on the target server, you will not require any database. Suppose you are performing a database refresh. In that case, you can you can drop the existing database before you proceed with this uh, restore. I mean the cloning from an uh, active database. So in this case, we have source setup with the name uh, name of the database as a test. So our first step in the, in this scenario should be always transfer the password file from the source setup. So for this purpose, I'll log in and I'll go to this location. And this is our first uh, source setup. OK, so as of now, there is no password file. But yeah, in production environment, if you have a password file, so you should transfer this password file from source to target server. So if the password file is not there, that means we need to generate the password file here real quick. So let me show you how you can create the password file. So to create the password file, we have to type something like this Aura PWD and then file name. So in this case, the file name will be Aura PW and this is the instance name test password. Of, uh, we are going to keep sys and force equal to y. This is the syntax that we have to utilize to create the password on the source setup. So I'll quickly run this command. So it is expecting the password to be a little strong. Let's uh, uh, make it a little complex also. Otherwise, we can use format equal to 12C. And so this has created our password file. 
now we can see this password file because in 12 version of the password file basically we we can go with a smaller version of the password file so i'll just keep this note updated here so password file got generated now we need to transfer this password file to the target server so if you go to the target server which is the server ip is ending with 1.50 here you can see that these are source data i'll make the coloring here This is our target one. So now if I go to this server and run CD command. So currently the password file should not be there. But anyways, we can just double check. There's no password file present here. So we will first transfer the password file. So to transfer the file, we have to use this command. The password file got transmitted from source to target. After this, our next step is to configure the TNS entry, which is very important. So configure TNS entry on the source setup. So in this case, we should have the TNS entry of uh, the second node or the, your target server. When you have to modify the host name here, you should be able, we should be able to connect to the target server. So in this case, I'm going to keep the name of the database or you can just put it like this as a target but here the host name is slightly different so we will modify it so the current host name is test hyphen v vm so wherever it is mentioned like this i'll just replace this one the name of the service of the database will be this one only so we'll just quickly modify the tns entry on the source setup this is our source setup here we have a network file there we will modify the tns names.ora file so we need to put this new entry here so this tns file is now updated with a target value so this is our target server so here i am saying target so target is nothing what you have, the server of uh, the server where we need to make the database restoration using the actual I to Armin option. Okay. So this server is basically considered in this example as a target server. Now we have created the TNS entry. So initially, if you try to run the TNS ping command, it will it will not work because there is no listener running on the other side. So here we know we don't have any listener, so that's why it is saying like no listener is running. And after that, on now we need to connect to our target server, which is in this case is considered as an auxiliary. So if you are talking about Armen uh, language basically the target server is nothing but an auxiliary server and this source setup with this basically is considered as a target server so there's a little confusion here but anyways let's consider this an auxiliary setup auxiliary setup basically, basically means the server which which we we want to uh, where we want to restore the data so we are currently on the auxiliary setup and its ip address is ending with 1.50 so our first step in this case will be make sure etc host file contains a tns and i mean uh, server entries so in this case if i run cat etc host so this is already updated it has a first uh, source setup and the auxiliary setup both information is there so now we will just update this document as well really quickly so i'll just put it here So this document is already up to date. Now, after that, we need to go to the network location on this server because now we need to create one listener also. So in the listener, we have to put the information like uh, the server name. So in this case, it should be test to VM2 because this is our second VM machine. And the rest of information is looking good. So let's copy entire information from here, edit the listener.ora file if any existing entry is there we need to adjust that so it is already adjusted so no need to modify anything here so we'll save this file as it is after that we will start the listener so this is our listener that we will need to start so once the listener got started it is now pointing to the server name itself that is test hyphen vm2 Okay. After this, we will start 
this database instance with the help of new p file so this this p file we need to create on this server and this p file should have certain information such as the audit file location also it should have the trail file and uh, audit trail that is db control file location we have to specify db block size uh, block size db name db recovery file so all those information we have to mention suppose if there is a location changes ha changes are happening like uh, your source contains u02 and your target contains u01 uh, so you have to adjust those information but here in, in this case in this case both the server is having the equal mount points like u01 u02 even on the target also we have the location so in this case there is no uh, adjustment needed so what i will do i'll make this two parameters commented out but if you require you can basically uh, put this parameter in this way basically this one is a source location this one is a target location this is for db file name converter this is for log file name converter optionally you can use these two options also but again if you use this way you, you will create the omf based file system so we will create one p file using this parameter so quickly create one p file So here we will create one p file. This is our target server. So p file got created. Now we need to uh, proceed with the next step. So in the next step, if you have specified any location in this, uh, you have to make sure you create the necessary directory structure. So I'll just quickly create this structure on this. Uh, server that is our uh, auxiliary setup after that we need to connect and uh, create one sp file from the p file and then we start the database with no mount mode okay so once the database instance that is the your auxiliary database is started in no mount mode so after that we need to connect to target server which is your source setup in this case so, okay this is going to be connection to the source and this is going to be connection to the your auxiliary database so we have to connect both together but again in order to connect to the target you have to ensure the tns entry tns ping should work so here tns ping is not working that means you have not entered the network configuration detail in this file DNS entry is missing in the TN, in this particular uh, server. So quickly we can just cat the TNS names or Dora file from here and put the same entry on this target server. Dot Dora. Okay, after this. So once it is done, then after that you can log in to perform the duplicate operation so I, I am able to connect to both the databases it says target database not mounted so let's check, check the database status here okay so this is target here we have not specified the db unit uh, sorry in the connection string we have not mentioned like which database we want to connect into the target so it should be test here that's why it is giving that error so now it says no listener running here so on this server let's check it out if listener is running or no listener is down so we need to start the listener also these are first vm machine which is considered as a source setup so in this source setup we need to ensure the listener and database should be running before you run the connect command okay so we will try to reconnect now and this time it will connect to both the databases so what it says database this is our source set setup and this is our auxiliary setup so it is connected to both the setups now so i'll just update this in file also 
So after this, we need to run the duplicate command. So duplicate command, what it does? Duplicate target database to test from an active database and no file name check. So no file name check, what it will do? It will ensure that uh, it, will it will try to create all the required file structure and it's considered that files and names are already present. So this, in, this one liner of command like duplicate target database to test from an active data uh, database, no file name check, what it will do? It will clone the database on the auxiliary setup from our original uh, source one setup that is a test database which is running on the VM one. Okay, so this is going to be a, a one step command that we have to run in order to perform the cloning. So we can see that a database cloning operation is happening step by step, like it is started with this particular process. Here the control file is getting restored and then after that it is, it is performing the restoration of data files. So everything is happening automatically here. We don't have to do any uh, things in this process. So we can see that database is basically open now and this is basically completed with the so in this process, the last step will be to verify the database information. So I'll quickly log in here. And as, a, as per the post check, you have to first run these commands. So we can see this database is now running read write mode. Also, we can parallelly check the name of the data file locations. All the data files are present here. Also, we can verify the temp file location. Control files are there. Also, we can verify the redo log files. So as for this, we can see like everything is completed successfully without any issue. And this was our learning from this session. I hope you have understood like how you can perform the database duplication from any an active database so this was a step by step guide thanks for watching this tutorial please do subscribe our youtube channel if you have any question with respect to this tutorial you can comment and you can always reach out to our given contact details uh, you can find it out in the description of this video for any trainings uh, please do visit our website also thank you so much for watching this tutorial have a good one